What's going on, Safe House family? Look, welcome to another episode of the Safe House podcast. And I have a question for you today. How are you measuring um, the standards for your future spouse? But most importantly, I want you to evaluate how are you measuring the standards for yourself? Let's take that journey and find out. So earlier this week, I made a Facebook post and I talked about um, not being in a position of judging people's standards because there's no, it is, is no reason for us to judge what a person set their standards as. That is not our job. That is not our position to judge another person for, you know, what they say that they want or what they say that they like in a person. And so I made this post and, you know, most of the time it was the men that, um, you know, they commented on it and, you know, they had their, uh, their say saying, you know, a lot of these ladies, their, their standards are not realistic, but as men, who are we to, ju who are we to judge those women? Who are we to sit there and say that your standards are unrealistic? That is not our position to say those things. And we shouldn't put ourselves in a position of judging people, because I want you to understand this. The same way that you judge those women is the same way that you're going to the same way that you're going to be judged when you have to stand stand in front of that judgment seat and you have to give an account of everything that you've done on this earth to God. Because at no point of time should we ever put ourselves in a position to where we're saying that, ma'am, your standards are too high. Or sir, your standards are too high. Because it's always somebody out there right now that's going to be willing to meet the standards of that person. She may say, hey, I want a millionaire. You know, I, you know, I want them to be able to fly me out. I want them to be able to go to the club, take take me here, take me there. And that's cool. He may sit there and say, hey, I want me a woman that's going to wait on me hand and foot. You know, she's going to cook. She's going to clean. She's going to do all the laundry. She's going to take care of the kids. She's going to do all these things. And that's OK for that. If that's what that person feels that they want, that is perfectly fine. But we also have the opportunity to sit there and say, hey, you know what, ma'am? Hey, you know what, sir? I can't meet those standards. I can't meet those standards personally because I don't live my life in that way. And I don't, I personally don't agree with those standards, but if those are your standards, that is perfectly fine. And we have to be willing enough and we have to be strong enough to sit there and say certain things that we can't do versus putting ourselves inside of a relationship, trying to do something that we know that we're incapable of doing. Because what's going to happen at that point is you're going to create a bigger disconnect within your relationship. What's going to happen is going to show that you aren't equally yoked to each other and you are not spiritually aligned to what God has called y'all for. Because you're trying to do something that you know that you can't do or that you're incapable of doing right now. Another thing, at no point of time should we ever tell a person that their standards are too low because what you think may be low may be just right for them. They may say, hey, I want a relationship that where well, we can get up in the morning you know, we can go walk the dog together. We can have simple conversations. You know, um, you know, we can we can go to the park together. We can do. If that's what a person wants to do to me, that is the most beautiful thing that you can sit there and do with your spouse. Because it's because it's so much value in simplicity. It's so much value, um, you know. In that. And so what, what, what I want people to understand that it is not our responsibility, but the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to convict their hearts. If their standards are too high, if their standards are too low, it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to convict their hearts. It is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to let them know, hey, we need to adjust your standards. Because what you're measuring your standards off of is not based off what I need from you are it's not based off what scripture is telling you to judge your stand to base your standards off of. And so what I want to do, you know, at, at this point, I want to talk about what do we how do we begin to change how we measure the standards that we set for ourselves, which will eventually help us set the standards um, that, you know, help us measure the standards that we have set for the, you know, the person that God wants us to be and um, be with. So how do we do that? First, I want to go to Romans 12. Um, let me go to that for you. So Romans 12. Romans 12, um, verse 2, it says this. Do not copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. 
So in order for us to begin to change, you know, how we measure our standards, we have to let God transform us first. We have to stop looking at what this world wants us to have our standards as. We have to stop looking at what IG or TikTok or what Facebook says, you know, these are the standards that your spouse should have. Because when you look at the standards of this world, a lot of it is based off flesh. It's what your flesh is telling you. Oh, I want, I want me a man, you know, he's 6'5". You know, he 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 built like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. You know, I, I want me a man that, you know, he makes this, he makes that. Okay, but is he a God-fearing man? Does he have the ability to lead you based off how God is leading him? Does he have the ability to love you in a way that God loves him? Is he helping you grow mentally? Is he helping you grow spiritually? Is he help? Is he helping you in all the ways that God needs him to help you? See, a lot of times we get so fixated on what, you know, we see our friends have or we get so fixated on, you know, what society tells us our spouse should be. And a lot of times this stuff is based off the flesh. And when you base things off the flesh, what happens is, you know, that that creates certain desires in your heart. And those desires lead to certain temptations. And then that, those temptations begin to lead you into sin. And what happens when, when, when that sin comes in? So whatever you're engaging in at that point ends in spiritual death, emotional death, you know, mental death, all of these things. That is not what God intended for us. And so, you know, when we look at um, 2 Corinthians um, chapter 6, verse 14, it says this. It said, either way, uh, Christ's love controls us. And since we believe that Christ died for all of us, we also believe that we have died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive the new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who, who, was, who has died. And was raised for them so we have to stop evaluating others and ourselves from a human point of view see we have to we, we have to stop measuring people based measuring pe measuring our standards and the standards that we have for other people based off our emotions no we have to stop looking at things from a human point of view and ask god to allow us to see things and hear things in the spirit because i promise you what i promise you when you begin to walk with christ a lot of things is going to begin to change in your life. It's going to be a lot of things that, one, you don't want to do. It's going to be, a, one, a lot of activities that you don't want to engage in, people that you don't want to talk to anymore. It's going to be a lot of things that change. And at first, it's going to seem like a burden. It's going to seem like it's so much suffering. But one thing that, I, one thing that I've learned through our scripture reading is that we have to patiently endure the suffering and the sacrifices that we have to make to be able to follow Christ. So one of those sacrifices is sacrificing, you know, how we measure, you know, how we measure our, you know, how we measure the standards for ourselves and how we measure the standards for our spouse based off what the world, when we have to sacrifice that. We have to, because that is not what God is calling us to do. And so, you know, you got to understand when Christ died, we also died to our old self. So we have to leave that behind. Colossians 2, 3, it tells you to set your eyes on, you know, what is above and not what's here on this earth. We can't keep we can't keep judging situations and keep living our lives based off what this world tells us is right and what the world tells us these standards are. So you ask me, if you ask me, what 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 are the standards that we're supposed to have? So when you look at First Timothy, I'm gonna tell you right now, what is the overall goal for a Christian? For a disciple? What is the overall goal? What what are we what are what are we what path are we setting on? What destination are we trying to reach? You know, first Timothy uh, chapter four, verse seven, it says this, train yourselves to be godly, train yourselves to be in Christ's likeness. If you want to know what the standards that you should have for yourself, you need to under you need to get into scripture and you need to understand. You need to understand and you need to imitate the character and conduct of Christ. Those are the standards. Those are the standards that you must create for yourself. You need to be able to live in the. You need to be able to live in the way that he lived. You need to be able to con conduct yourself in the way that he conducted himself. You need to be able to be compassionate, loving, caring. Um, be willing to give people grace. Be willing to be there for people. You know, as he was. You need to be able to put yourself in a servant position at times to be able to help bring people out of situations that they find themselves in. That is how we measure. The, that is how we measure the standards of what we should be and how we should live our lives. And once you're able to do that, you're able to change the standards of, of what you would want your spouse to be because you're going to want your spouse to imitate the same thing. You're going to want to, you're going to want your spouse to live in the same way that you're living under the same light that God has given you because we have the, we have the light of the Holy Spirit already inside of us. 
it's already there and it's already been inside of the righteousness has already been inside of us god is just waiting for us to mature into it so when you um so you know as we as as we move on with that it's it's like as you get into ephesians 5 33 like when you're looking for the standards of your wife and you're looking for the standards of your husband ephesians 5 33 it tells you this you know um you know, husbands, love your wife as you love yourselves. Hus uh, wives, respect your husband. These are characteristics that your that your future spouse um, should have. Husband, you need to be able to love your wives unconditionally. Even if they may not be respecting you in the way that you need them to, you still need to be able to love them through that. Wives, you need to be able to respect your husband, even if he may not be loving you in the way that you need him to be. You see what I'm saying? We have to begin to focus on what Christ needs from us. We need to be able to get into scripture, understand what scripture is telling us. We need to be able to formulate the standards for ourselves based off scripture, based off what God is showing us, based off what he is leading us. We have to leave behind what the world tells us is a, is, is a perfect relationship because you have to get out of the state of mind and say, hey, I want a perfect relationship. No relationship is perfect. You want the right relationship. You want your relationship to go in the correct manner that it needs to be based off the blessings of God. And the only way to do that is to get into scripture. The only way to do that is to follow what God is instructing you to do. Now, you know, I hope, you know, I know that it's going to help somebody out there right now. Um, because these are things that I had to do for myself. These are things that I had to do for myself. Because one thing that I did before I actually made, made a decision to live the life that I live now with Christ, you know, removing myself um, from a lot of things that I used to do, drinking, um, you know, smoking, going out to clubs, you know, living my life in the flesh, living my life based off the lustfulness that it was in my heart, living my life based off the, you know, the, the sinful desires that was inside of me. Once I began to put both feet into Christ, everything began to change for me. I didn't want to live the life that I once lived anymore. I don't want to do the things that I once did anymore. Like when I sit there and think about the things that I, I, I did in the past and the way that I live, it makes me so uncomfortable. Honestly, it makes me sick to my stomach. It does. You know, I tell people this all the time, like, you know, thinking about how I live, it, it hurts a lot because I was in a very dark place at that point in my life. And I was sitting here judging my life based off things that I seen in this world judging my life and my relationship based off other people's relationship that I've seen. I'm watching social media. I'm looking at this. I'm watching my friends and their relationships. I'm looking at this and I'm measuring myself to their, I'm measuring myself to their standards, to the world standards. And it wasn't until now, you know, eight months later, now I understand, all right, God, you know, I have to, me I have to measure my life based off the standards that you have for me. And so that's what I, I want everybody to be able to do. You know, I want you to be able to trust what God is telling you, trust the standards that he has set before you. Um, I want everybody to have prosperous relationships. I want you to have a prosperous relationship, most importantly with God, because that relationship is the source of everything that you will have in your relationships and friendships on this earth. So I love y'all safe house family. Y'all have a good one. All right.